Hey, y'all. Ron here from Military Images Magazine with a new episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. You know, this weekend I was at the Baltimore Antique Arms Show, which is just north of Baltimore. And uh, I had a number of wonderful and great moments meeting friends, making new friends, seeing a lot of great images and other relics during my two days at the show, and then another day, the dealer setup day. So it was a wild time, and the Baltimore show was always great for surprises and new things that happen. Here's one of them, perhaps my favorite moment during the entire weekend, and it happened yesterday. I had gone to one of the tables for a collector who was displaying a collection of Zouave images that were tinted. And um, I brought my scanner over to the table to be able to scan these images for the inclusion in a future issue of the magazine. I get all my stuff over there and I realize that I forgot my extension cord. I had left it back at my table. So I'm making my way through the crowd. It was fairly dense. There's um, a part, there's a main hallway getting to my table and it was rather crowded. And as I'm making my way through all the folks thinking about getting that extension cord, I hear someone yell out with a sort of a sense of urgency, Ron. And I turn around and I'm looking face to face with a, an individual, a woman I had never met before. And uh, she says, I have my morning coffee with you every day. I watch your show on YouTube. And I was taken aback and surprised. And uh, I met her. Uh, her name is Tina. And um, we began talking. And she pulled out a, a manila envelope and uh, started to show me what was inside. By this time, we were getting ourselves out of the main corridor where all the traffic was off to the side. And she begins to show me what she has in the envelope. And so here is the first thing that she shows me. It's this portrait and it's about five by seven in size. I, as you can see, it's a Confederate officer and um, he has his hand tucked into his jacket. Uh, it has this gray mount around it. And um, I can tell you because of the size and because of the color and the texture of the mount, I recognized it easily as a probably circa 1910 copy print of a Civil War time image. And so these images are, these copy prints you see fairly often and um, think about the time around 1910 or so, the Civil War veterans are beginning to pass from the scene, the ones that have survived the war and made it into their 60s and 70s. They're beginning to pass from the scene and families are making copies of these images, these original images to share with the grandchildren, the great grandchildren and other folks as part of a memorial of their Civil War ancestor. And so these are great images and they're really important because they, uh, they stand out in that period in time as the generations are beginning to pass by, uh, they're becoming part of the American memory. And so what better way to remember that ancestor than through looking at their face. And so Tina really felt the importance. She understood the importance of this because this is her ancestor. And uh, she knew she knows exactly who this man is. He is Warner Griffith Welsh. And uh, he's from Maryland. Uh, when the war began, he's a little bit on the older side. He's close to 40 years old when he enlisted. Uh, he's in the 7th Virginia Cavalry. So uh, after Virginia secedes and Maryland is remaining loyal to the United States. Uh, Welsh goes over into Virginia, which is a fairly common uh, move by Marylanders who chose to be uh, loyal to the Southern cause. So he goes to Virginia, he enlists in the 7th Virginia Cavalry, goes on to serve in the 12th Virginia Cavalry, and then as an officer, a captain in the 1st Maryland Infantry. So uh, getting all this information and then 
as Tina is taking this photograph out of the envelope, another photograph, a much smaller photograph slides out. And it's this one here. This is the original from which the copy print that I just showed you was made. And this is the original. This is the original photograph that was taken of Captain Welsh. So this is a carte de visite and it was probably made uh, towards the end of the war, would be my guess, at the very end of the war. And you can see it's almost square in shape. I want to show you the, uh, an example of a carte de visite in its uncut form. This image that we're looking at over here of Captain, whoops, sorry, <laughs> over here of uh, Captain Griffith has been cut down probably to fit into a photograph album, or it was cut down to fit into a frame. And that explains why it is so square. These original uncut ones are more about the size of a modern baseball card or a trading card. They are uh, more vertical um, in the dimensions, more rectangular in the dimensions. And you can also see this particular image. Let me get a little closer here. You can see the borders. Uh, there's borders around the frame. And in Tina's carte de visite, uh, you can see the hint of the gold borders around the edges here. So it's been cut down, which again is fairly common. You see images with clipped corners or more severely cut like this one was. The good news here is it does not appear at all to affect the image area. The image area appears to be completely intact. So Tina and I were sort of having this amazing and wonderful moment uh, as she was sharing information about Captain Welsh. And a couple of times she got emotional uh, and, and I started to get a little emotional too because I could feel her excitement and her enthusiasm. And she was telling me stories. She's a school teacher telling me stories about how she started to find out about this image and learn more, uh, finding out details of his service. So we had a really great conversation. We went, I got the extension cord and together we walked over to the table where the collector had the Zouave images. I cranked up the scanner. I made scans of both of these photographs. We continued the conversation. We also talked about preservation. Uh, I explained to her the importance of getting mylar or polypropylene sleeves for archival reasons to keep the images safe for the future. We also talked about the importance of scanning at an archival resolution, which I did for her. And I sent her the images last night uh, after the show. So um, we had a really, really great time that, I don't know, we must have spent about a half an hour together. It was hands down my most memorable moment for two reasons, really. Um, her enthusiasm and excitement, the fact that the image, this image remained with the family for 160 years, you know, I don't, I don't encounter that quite as much, um, but I do have folks like Tina that come into the shows and bring along their images, but Tina's enthusiasm or excitement, being able to talk about this image, knowing that it's with her, it'll be with the family, you know, for as long, as long as she has this image and probably passes along to her family. So just, just great stuff. Uh, and the other thing was to see the two copies of the image for her to have the original as we're again, as we're seeing here and that copy print, I'll show you that again, to see that copy print was just wonderful. So really capturing the importance of that original image because Captain Welsh wanted to have his likeness preserved in his Confederate uniform. And then 50 years later, the family remembering uh, the captain and being able to take a photograph of him to pass along to future generations. We're very fortunate to have both of these images with us today. So I want to say a big, big, big thank you to Tina. Um, as you're enjoying your coffee, uh, I hope you're enjoying this episode. And of course, a shout out to all of you who have been watching. You may have noticed that our subscriber numbers have increased greatly over the last couple months. And I'm grateful to all of you for that. So for all of you who are enjoying coffee right now and Tina, 
I wish you all the best. And to all of you, I'll see you on the next episode of Life on the Civil War Research Trail. Take care.